came into this world already wired with an internal system of gifts and resources. The question is, why are we given these gifts? I believe that we have been given these gifts so that we can be able to step up and serve in our environment, in our communities. You have in you the gifts you need to do the service that you are called to do. Don't you agree? I'm Catherine Gahu from SBO Research. Thank you for tuning in to my channel, Elevators, where we offer elevating and empowering messages to help you grow in career, life, and business. In this video, I will talk about how to step up and start a new thing. Do like this video and stay with me to the end so that you can get the full benefit of what I've prepared for you. Now, we face many challenges in life and they sometimes cause us to lose confidence in our ability to start a new thing. Many times, we are held up by our own self-doubts, the fear of the unknown, fear of failure, fear of rejection, and fear of social embarrassment. We ask, what will my friends say? What will my family say? What will my colleagues say? What will my bosses say? Suppose I step up and things don't work. These are some of the questions that we ask that tend to bring about doubt concerning our aspirations in our personal lives, our finances, our careers and business. And this doubt is dangerous. It works to hinder us from stepping up to start a new thing, to rise to a higher standard, to move forward as we intend to do. This is so common with many of us and it's no one's fault. It's not your fault, it's not our fault. There is so much uncertainty in the world today that it breeds confusion. The thing is, we will not make any progress if we continue hiding our gifts and refusing to step up and start the new thing that is tugging at our hearts. You need to step up in faith and offer the gift that you have been given. You have been given this gift so you can share it with society. You have great capacity in that area of your gifting. It's tied to your gifting. If you search it, you will find it. Stop discounting your ideas because of doubts and fear of failure or fear of what others will say. So how do we overcome self-doubt so that we can start the new thing that we want to start? First, we need to have the courage. Have the courage. No one start anything because they have total awareness of what is going to happen. The outcome is always hidden. You see many people start new things, whether it's a business, a church, a technology, or an app, a community project, political career, or even a music career, or an investment group, and many other types of new things. It just depends on you. What new thing do you want to start? And the question is, what's holding you back? Now, the people who start a new thing, they don't start because they have 100% confidence of what will come out of that decision. No, they start despite the doubts. Many times, we see those who are starting new things and think that they are more gifted, more favored, more networked, more managed, more strong, and the like. But the real difference is that they have the courage to start. When I started my business, I had no idea what it would take to run such a business. I'd never run a business. In fact, I'd never even been employed in such a business. In the early days, I made so many mistakes, from operations to finances, to marketing, to communications. And let me tell you, in almost every area, I was making mistakes. But all I did is to keep learning as I moved on. I kept learning, and to tell you the truth, to this day, I am still learning. And I can assure you that many celebrated and successful business people or politicians, church leaders, and musicians are still learning and great success. The second thing that I would suggest is to recognize doubt as an enemy. 
we can learn from the wise regarding this matter of self-doubt. William Shakespeare talked about this issue of self-doubt many years ago, saying that our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we often might win by fearing to attend. That is, doubt are an enemy of your agenda to start a new thing. And so you must find a way to overcome the doubt. We must work to erase the doubts from our minds and work to repress them with confidence, with faith and hope. The third is to focus on your strengths and not your weaknesses. My personal approach to overcoming doubt is um, to focus on my strengths instead of my weaknesses. I work to search consciously in my mind and I list my strengths and giftings, what I consider to be my gifts that are relating to the new thing that I want to start. That new thing could be anything. It could be a new way of doing something that you are already doing. It could be a new way of budgeting. It could be a new way of doing affirmations. It could be a new way of praying. So I identify my strengths that are related to that thing. Sometimes I will even ask my trusted circle which strengths they see in me that could help me in a certain pursuit. Because sometimes you cannot always see clearly. Then I meditate on my strengths, thereby enhancing my focus on them. I do this because I believe that what you think about most of the time will expand in your mind and be magnified in your life. When you direct your focus on your strengths, they actually appear to grow and expand in your eyes. And that's all that matters. This serves to give you the confidence you need in order to step up in faith. And that works for me. The fourth is to change your opinion about yourself. Because as Hanok McCarthy put it, it's not who you are that holds you back. It's who you think you are. Who do you think you are? So sometimes I even ask myself, when I'm in doubt or have issues and challenges, I say, wake up, Catherine, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? And by thinking who I think I am, I start to change my response to a situation. So you need to believe. You need to believe in good things about yourself for you to have the confidence to step up to a higher standard and overcome the nagging doubt. For you to believe and be able to use the gift that has been put in you, that was installed in you, just the way your phone came with software installed in it so it could function. As Glenn Beck put it, sometimes the hardest part of the journey is believing that you're worth the trip. If you don't believe that you are worthy of your aspiration, worthy of the new thing that you want to start, you will tend to sabotage yourself subconsciously, unknowingly. Of course, sometimes you may struggle with believing in yourself because no one else seems to. But in such a case, you need to consider that perhaps you have shared your idea of the new thing that you want to start with people of a limited mindset. People who think small when you are trying to think big and planning to step up. Maybe they even are intimidated by your broad perspective and the courage you demonstrate by dreaming so big. Think again. Find a mentor who can identify with what you are talking about, what you want to start, that new thing that you want to start. Preferably one who has done it before or one who has seen it done, who understands that new thing that you're talking about. To quote Rob Liano, once you embrace your value, talents and strengths, it neutralizes when others think less of you. Another perspective to overcome doubt and step up and start a new thing is to move quickly once you have made the decision. Speed has its own value. Before you start doubting yourself, once you've made the decision, move with speed. 
and you will find that you make greater progress that way. Now to sum it up, for you to be able to step up and start a new thing, you need to overcome, you need to overcome the doubts that nag at you. Thank you. Do like this video and share it with someone who you think might benefit from it. All the best as you work to step up and start the new thing. We all need to elevate our mindsets at this time. <music>